This thing's run straight. I just ran uh, over 10,000 sheets through there and it didn't jam once. So I guarantee you that belt was the problem. And you can see there, it's missing about six teeth there in one spot. So, that was only like a $8 part, easy to fix. So, I wasn't 100% sure if that was gonna fix it, but obviously it did. Now I wanna swap out the spiral cleaner for this uh, vario print. And I'll tell you what, I've been in digital printing for quite a while and it's weird. I need to study a little bit more how this thing works, but it, it looks like it's from a spaceship or a different world. But uh, anyways, the press was telling me that it needed to replace the spiral cleaner and uh, I didn't have one. It was on the way here and then they shipped it to the wrong address. You gotta love that. But anyways, I got one now and uh, so now I wanna open it up and replace the old one before I hurt something by not replacing it. Oh, it looks like this thing has like a heated lamp in the center of it. That was just wild. Okay, this spiral roller is just right on top here. And I guess over time it, uh, it fills up completely. And uh, like this one, it uh, toner has kind of bridged the gap inside those. Uh, but that's apparently cleaning off the, the roller here. So it's really simple to replace. You just gotta pull these pins back and they're nice and warm and then lift it out All right, good as new. And uh, I went and picked up myself a five and a half millimeter driver. Uh, I also had a, a T20 Torx driver on hand. So apparently those are the two that uh, I'm gonna encounter the most in here. But again, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to be able to keep this press for long because there are certain things I'm not going to be able to do uh, like the drum unit where I'm going to need a key to apparently do that so I might need to hire somebody to come out and do certain things and or I might roll the other one out here but so far this thing has been awesome something else that's been really fun is adding toner you just set it up on top here and it shakes the toner right out of here. I'm not used to that with the Konica machines. Just shakes it all out of there. And you can see it going down. Eventually, that uh, clicking and the vibrating will stop, but the reality is, is it empties pretty quick. And you just Close that back up. Oh, I can still feel toner in there. Open it back up. It's a lot like the uh, 1200 that I have where it actually stores a lot of toner inside itself uh, and it tells you how, how much space is available in there and whether or not it's gonna demand you put toner in it. It's pretty cool. It's been a long time since I ranted about paper 
so I think I'm gonna fix to do that here in the later part of this video because I'm starting to perf about 8,000 sheets of carbonless and I bought six cases of it back in January specifically for this job and boy I'm glad I did because you can't buy it now and my wall of paper definitely looks different than it normally does I have different brands than I typically buy and when I do buy it a paper I buy three times as much as I typically buy and I that's why I have a huge stack here and I have more in the warehouse just because I don't know when that's gonna be available again boy I wish I would have bought more gloss text weight that stuff is tough to come by I've been out of 80 and 100 pound gloss text for probably about a month now and although I do see some stuff starting to trickle in and I jumped on a little bit of it but I should probably get more I hate to be a naysayer but I really don't see an end in sight anytime soon uh, the volume of paper at my supplier is always low and I have created a a favorites list of about 20 stocks every day I just go in there and I check that list and see if we got inventory in some of the paper that I typically buy and I want to buy. Uh, and I do that just to check. But boy, two or three times already, I've had paper in my cart and somebody else bought it out from underneath me. So if you're around me and you did that, shame on you. But I'll forgive you, I'd have done the same thing. I'm also curious if anybody is considering how they're going to be quoting for print jobs with increased paper prices because the paper price uh, the way I quote anyway drives the profit margin so if my paper price goes up by two my profit margin is actually going to go up as well and I'm just wondering I need to think about it a little bit more if I want to lower that profit margin I'm not necessarily I don't think I will but uh, on some jobs I might actually on jobs that I really want or larger volume jobs uh, to try and make sure that I have the same profit I typically have gotten in the years past and I'm not too much profit because of increased paper prices. Another business ethics question is if I buy $10,000 worth of paper and I put it in my warehouse and uh, I did that you know six months ago today that paper could be worth twice as much so that might be twenty thousand dollars worth of paper how are you going to sell it to your customer i'm going to sell it at the current day price because that's what it's going to cost for me to replace that paper and you know that that extra money is actually just going to cover warehousing and insurance and other stuff so that's how i'm doing it let me know in the comments how you're doing it and it has been interesting i haven't seen much price gouging from my distributor anyways uh, I do see now that there are certain stocks that are available just small quantities and the price is double what I would have paid last year and I'm assuming that's just a supply and demand thing um, but for the most part when a paper comes in stock uh, the price isn't too different here uh, it's just a little bit more but nothing that I'm that concerns me. It's the doubling of paper prices that that little that scares me a little bit. And some the way I look at it, somebody's just trying to make a buck there. I don't know if that's good or not. Oh well.
Well, it's that time of the month again where I go around and collect all the click counts on all the digital presses. And this whole thing's nice. It's the most we ran it this past month. It was like 140,000 clicks, all eight and a half by 11. And uh, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you saw I put a spiral roller in and other than that, maybe like twice I had to open it up and clean a sensor. It actually told me to clean a sensor in there. I guess it was paper dust because it was getting dirty. But the thing, quality is still good. It's just running. I'm, I'm impressed by that thing. And now that I have all my carbonless perfed, it looks like it's going to be a carbonless week next week. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. But going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.